Hi guys, check out the new gimbal I'm working on right now. So far I got the tilt axis working and it looks pretty good. Uh, right here I got a SJ cam, which is just basically a cheap knockoff version of a GoPro. And I'm controlling this server right here that makes the thing go up and down. Controlling that with a servo tester, which all it does is just runs through the all the different degrees on the servo's motion and makes it go back and forth. And it's just powered by a little powered by the battery elimination circuit in the ESC and the little lipo right here. But uh, eventually I'm going to make a three axes. Right now I only have the tilt because I was making sure all this stuff worked first. But I should have a tilt and then the, uh, the roll next and the, uh, the top. And we'll see how that goes. But So the reason I am actually building a gimbal is because my physics teacher uh, the other day was talking to me about trying to f uh, shoot some footage over one of the buildings we have on campus. And the only way I can really think of doing that easily is by building a quadricopter. So I guess I'm building a quadricopter now, so it'll be kind of cool. I have some experience in RC, so it shouldn't be too difficult. But I'm going to be making some videos about me building my quadricopter, and we'll see how that goes. One of the functions I like to have in this quadricopter is something called FPV. It stands for First Person View, and basically it transmits the video that your quadricopter is seeing to a ground station, so you can view it and control the quadricopter. The way I'm going to be viewing my video is through a pair of Fat Shark goggles. These are the Fat Shark HD2s. They no longer make this model, but there's plenty of other good ones out there. These have a lot of cool functions, one of them being head tracking. So when you turn these goggles, they can sense which direction you're turning them, and then can send that information to your gimbal and your quadricopter, and your quadricopter's gimbal will turn the way you're turning the goggles. So it's almost like you're right there, and the video will all, or the, yeah, the video will line up with them perfectly. They also have a really cool uh, recording feature, so you can record the video that is being seen in the goggles. And they also, you can buy a diversity setup, so you can use two antennas to receive information from your quadricopter, which is much uh, safer, and you can get much better video quality through that. But they're just all around a great pair of goggles. Go check them out. Like usual, I designed the entire gimbal in SolidWorks first to make sure everything will fit together correctly. As you can see here, we got the SJ cam, uh, all our servos. And this hole is actually for counterweight. You can see in the other video that it has uh, nickels in there to kind of counteract the, the weight in this side so the servos don't have to work as hard. And the whole entire assembly also works. So you can see I can move the tilt axis on the, on the gimbal like that. We got the roll by moving this one. You can see the servo arms actually move almost uh, perfectly. And then we have the last one appears for the, the uh, but I just always do this before making a, a design, just it makes it a lot easier to 3D print all the parts and you know it's going to work, or almost know it's going to work after you draw it in SolidWorks. Check out that baby. Man, that's a good print right there. Just got that off the printer. Uh, you can see there's some little uh, butt ridges on there, but I just, I'm just printing at a uh, little bit of a larger nozzle size and a little bit lower layer height, so my prints come out a little bit stronger because it's more compressed but that is a pretty nice part pretty big too but not too much warping but there we go time to attach it Check it out. Just finished 3D printing the gimbal. Got it all assembled. Came out pretty well. Uh, I can run through the all the positions with the servo tester again, so you can see it move in all of its max points. And I think this amount of movement should be perfect for what I'm doing it with. But it looks pretty sick. A little bit overcomplicated, but it was my first gimbal design, so that's expected. Uh, pretty cool. So next step is to 
try to make this thing go or help it make, control this thing using a head tracking system and a pair of FPV goggles so that when you move your head, the camera moves where you're looking. That's what the hornless hole assembly was. So we'll see if I can get that working next. So I believed I hooked up all the wires correctly on the setup and now let's plug it in and see if nothing catches on fire. So we got powering up the transmitter that this uh, outputs the video signal from the SJ cam to the receiver on my goggles right here. These two antennas will pick up the signal. Uh, next I can turn on the goggles. There's a little plug right here. Just plug them in. Uh, and they should turn on and then we want to make sure they find the vid video signal. Oops. Uh, here we go. There's a little display on the receiver. We want to make sure it finds the correct uh, video channel or in channel eight. And we're picking up a signal. I'm not going to be able to to show it to you on this, but I'll show you some recordings of it on the SJ camp, and I can actually record what I'm seeing in the goggles, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to start the recording in the goggles. And then right when I get that blinking light, they're recording right now. And then let's record on the SJ cam. And he's flashing, so he's recording, which is awesome. And now let's get the head tracking working. So we're recording on both devices right now. We're transmitting video signal. Now we just want to get them to be able to move together. So I'm going to turn on my transmitter. I'm using the trainer settings in the transmitter to kind of, it's kind of like a cheaty way of making it work, but that's how the company wants you to do it. So that's why I have the trainer port on the back of the transmitter hooked up to the, I'm sorry, that's the receiver, not the transmitter, uh, hooked up to the goggles right here and to a port right here. So. Now I have to just turn on the track mode on the goggles. Right here is little HT stands for head track. So if I hold that down, uh, yeah. hello. Oh, <laughs> I haven't turned on the the uh, transmitter on the uh, or the no sorry. This is so confusing because it's backwards from the FPV and then from the actual controller. So the receiver has to have power. So I turn that on like that. Now we're receiving signal. And now we're making the thing, let's just recalibrate it and we'll turn it back off just to get it re-zeroed. So this is actually Ford's. So let's turn that on. No idea why that's peeping right now. It probably means low battery maybe. I think my battery's running low. But just ignore that beeping. And now we got it. So when I turn the headset, the camera moves with it. The headset, the camera moves with it. It's pretty cool. Cool. I'm sorry about the beeping guys, it's really annoying. <laughs> but there we go. I think it works pretty well. So let's turn that off. And let's stop the recording. And let's unplug that. So I'm guessing that beeping is just because my battery headset's almost out of battery. It only has one bar left, as you can see there. So I'll have to recharge that. But there we go, guys. We got the SJ cam app running video. We got the head tracking system to work, even though it just keeps beeping when I was doing it. 
But that is the first part of the gimbal experiment. I'll be posting some more videos as I continue to build the quadricopter. But this was just the biggest struggle because of all the electronics and all the, the programming and stuff to make it all work correctly and all the research. But uh, the quadricopter should be a little bit easier to build in my opinion. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed the, the gimbal project. Bye guys.